All right. Well, class doesn't start for about 10 minutes, but I usually like to take this time and talk about the news, of which there is always a ton. So if I can reach the right tab here. All right. So here's a few news articles I thought were interesting. Um, in Texas, they are, have a bill now going to Governor Abbott that will require armed guards in every school. And uh, as you might expect, the pushback on this is primarily about they didn't allocate enough money to pay for those guards because I don't think this uh, this concept is as controversial in Texas as it would be in California for the reason why. But some people don't think there should be guns in school too, but that's not a very popular attitude in Texas. Anyway, um, we'll see what comes of that. Uh, I must say it's probably realistic because I think there's no longer any option of not having guns. We now have more guns than humans in America, and there's no taking them back. So even if you think we shouldn't have guns everywhere, that ship has sailed. We now have guns everywhere. Um, so if you are a criminal, or for that matter, a penetration tester, and you want to get remote control of a target, Antivirus is irritating, now called endpoint protection. I've done versions of this, many people have done this, where you somehow try to modify malware so it will slip past it. There are a lot of techniques. And now there's something called bat cloak, which apparently is a proprietary thing, not available for like students to play with, which is what I was interested in. But this seems to be the latest thing, an engine you use to scramble the malware to make it undetectable. There are a lot of versions of this. I must say the most modern technique, though, is to stop using malware, called living off the land. This is the really cool way to do it. You use official tools from Microsoft and use them to control a machine. There are a bunch of remote control tools that are signed and legitimate, and then you don't set off antivirus. But anyway, um, that's the latest engine they're using to hide malware. So Toyota is showing off their new electric batteries, and they've got an electric battery, although it's not for sale yet, but they demonstrated it, that has 900 miles of range and charges in 30 minutes. And this I'm interested to see because I was pretty upset about the electric vehicle charging situation because it took like hours or overnight to charge and therefore it's ridiculous. And I thought the solution was the Chinese solution. There's a Chinese car company that just has replaceable batteries like your flashlight. You just go in, they take off the used battery pack, they give you a fresh one, you leave and they charge it later. That seemed like an obvious solution to me. But uh, what people tell me is that's not the one winning in the marketplace in America. This is the one, make a battery that will charge fast. And apparently it's still using lithium, which very much surprises me because lithium uh, generates heat when it charges. It generates crystals that cause it to short out and explode. And in general, I would think fast charging lithium is not a good technology, but that does seem to be where we're going. Anyway, as long as it works. If you could charge in half an hour and get a thousand miles of range, then I think people would accept it a lot better than the range anxiety is, I think, the main reason people are reluctant to go to EVs. Because if you have a gas car, you can drive anywhere. If you have an electric car, you're worried about where the charging stations are and will they be available and how much time do I have to wait charging. And I think we're, all new cars are going to have to be electric in California by 2025 or something very soon. So I think we're going to have a lot of unhappy drivers forced to use electrics when the infrastructure is not really there for them. Another thing is the electric power grid does not have the ability to deliver enough power to charge these devices yet. We need to build more power plants. We need to build more cables. So, you know, I'm still driving a gas car, and people tell me environmentally, if you have one, you should use it until it dies, which would be forever in California. And uh, But anyway, um, I don't recommend being an early adopter of an electric car unless you're willing to put up with a lot of hassle. But um, it's getting better, though. Last week, uh, GM and Tesla made a deal so GM cars can charge at the Tesla charging ports, which there's a lot more. So they're beginning to develop a standard for charging, which is good. But yeah, hybrid, that's another option. You a good point. Hybrid would be good because, you know, I think the prob there's a problem with charging. Um, for example, there's like two charging places at City College. They're always full. So if I had an electric car, I mean, people say you can just charge it at home. That's the thing to do. By the way, in the UK, I saw an article. He said if you charge it at home, it only costs me like 17 cents to charge it. But if I go to a charger, it's like 30 bucks. So I don't know if that's, I don't think that's true in America. In America, from what I hear, charging it at home has a pretty hefty power bill but probably cheaper than the charging stations. Anyway, we'll be learning a lot more about this soon as everybody switches to electrics, whether they like it or not. The einstein pinalski rosen paradox is at the heart of quantum mechanics. This is why Einstein did not believe in quantum mechanics. 
he, with Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen, he developed this clear demonstration that quantum mechanics is nonsense. You have a particle that decays into two particles. You let those two particles travel some large distance apart. And now, when you measure one, it has an instantaneous effect on the other. And he said, this is spooky action at a distance. This is insane. Two things that are far apart cannot instantly communicate. They can only communicate at the speed of light. That was his thing. And he said, this proves that quantum mechanics is garbage. And people have tried that, but that is what really happens. And now they've done it with an assembly of 900 atoms of bose eisen a Bose-Einstein condensate, a group of atoms cooled to where they act like a single atom. They made two clusters of hundreds of atoms and showed that they do have this effect. When you change one, it changes the other instantly. And this, if you're a psych that likes deep thinking, this causes, calls into question the very concept of space. It suggests that distance is an illusion. And two things that are far apart are not really far apart because affecting one can instantly affect the other and distance is just some kind of uh, epiphenomenon. It's the way things appear to be, not the way they are. And if you s study uh, Buddhism or a whole lot of things, a lot of people have suggested, Plato wrote uh, about this, um, that what we see with our senses is really very far from what's really there. And it, we're, we'll, we think we will understand the world, but we really understand sort of an oversimplified illusion. And what it really is, is very much stranger than what it appears to be. And uh, physics, gets there in many ways. Anyway, this is really true, that objects at a distance can be connected and have a strong effect on each other, despite the fact that there's not a, remotely enough time for anything to move from one to the other. Um, so the Apple made their headset for augmented reality, and people are arguing whether it's a good idea or not. Um, but anyway, these guys have made a headset just to read books, which is a curious idea. But anyway, people are, wearable computing is something, there'll probably be a ton of money made when someone makes good wearable computing, but so far all the headsets are uncomfortable and unpleasant and have give you motion sickness and such. We'll see how people like that Apple thing. The main complaint about the Apple thing I hear is it costs too much, 3,500 bucks. So anyway, it'll be a few years before there's really a practical wearable augmented reality headset. And uh, I would like it. I would like it if it didn't have to carry around a screen and a phone and just my email would just project in the world, but it would have to be like light and comfortable like just my glasses. And uh, so far, they apparently can't do that. They should include them in airplanes. Well, yeah, that's in, airplanes and cars have had heads-up display for a while. And that's the cool thing. There's a, a display down here that reflects off the windscreen, so you don't have to look away from the road to see things. Things will pop up right in front of you, and that's a good idea, but you're in a car. So you have the place to put the hardware and the power supply and everything. That it turns out that all the, yeah, they're heavy on your head. These, all these portable devices are too heavy to wear on your head comfortably. So anyway, um, all right. Yeah, so this is DNS security. I'm just, all right, anyway. So FAST doesn't officially start for a few minutes. I'm just talking about news articles while we wait. So Stack Overflow is um, one of the websites where people post programming and, and coding questions, and you get answers, and this is how most modern programmers work. So Google these guys and see what other people did and copy their code. And now they're trying to, um, they're worried about their code being used to train AI engines. And currently, they donate their content quarterly to the Internet Archive. But the Internet Archive has a policy, they're basically the library of the Internet, that anything on the archive is available for anybody to use any way they want, which means people are using it to train machine learning algorithms. And just like many other content creators, the people at Stack Overflow do not want their content used in this fashion. Um, if you have a large content of anything, that's worth money. You could charge people money for using that to train machine learning, and obviously they're thinking that maybe they'd like to do that. And just letting them have it and use it for free is something you probably don't want to do casually. And so this is a big issue. This is all over the place. The Hollywood scriptwriters and all kinds of people that create content are justifiably concerned that people are just going to train a machine learning model on my content and then they don't need me anymore. So anyway, Stack Overflow is one of the many content uh, archives that is struggling with that. Uh, don't think we need to. So there's a company called Hold Security. I've known them for years. I tried to get them to cooperate with me years ago and they wouldn't talk to me. But they, they're one of the many, they archive stolen data. 
there are few people that do this. They get all the dumps that hackers steal and they archive it and then use it to do things like predict what hackers are doing and how to defend your network. And they made a deal with Microsoft where Microsoft could search through their stolen data for Microsoft logins to warn those people they need to change their password. And in violation of the agreement, Microsoft just copied all the data and used it to build into their products and train their AI and everything. And now they're suing, saying Microsoft exceeded their contract. And uh, we'll see what comes of that. Um, Microsoft certainly does an awful lot of evil, unethical things. They were extremely unethical in the 80s and 90s under Bill Gates. They were just um, basically just a bunch of pirates and crooks, and then they got busted with a lawsuit, and they behaved better for a couple of decades, and now they're starting to behave badly again. Um, anyway, of course, that doesn't mean they did this particular bad thing, but they do an awful lot of bad things. Uh, and... Yeah, this is charming stuff. Uh, people that get obese have a problem, medical problem, where their brain does not tell them when they've eaten enough food. They remain hungry, and they show after you achieve this state, even if you diet and lose weight, your brain does not reset. You just remain not getting the normal signals telling you when you've eaten enough food, uh, with no sign of this being reversible. And this, of course, is one of the many reasons why Ozempic is unbelievable. It's gonna be the most valuable drug in the world, something like half of the entire population of Earth is overweight and would like to take Ozempic, which is the weight loss drug that really works, or some hopefully improved version of it that is cheaper with less side effects and that you don't have to inject. But even the current version that is expensive with side effects and requires you to take injections is incredibly popular. They're running out of it in America and in China. Everybody is buying it like mad to where you can't get it even if you have a medical need for it. And the company that makes it, uh, the Swiss company Roach, I think, is expected to be the most wealthy company in the world because they have the drug that more people want than anything else. Anyway, this is a huge problem. Obesity causes a lot of problems and it's not simple to fix. <laughs> so Western Digital has configured their hard disk drives so after three years, they will turn on a warning message. They will refuse to let you use it in data centers to replicate arrays, and they will warn you saying you need to replace this drive. And in fact, the real usable drives is more like seven years, so people are very, very angry about this, saying you're just making us buy a drive when we don't need to with this fake warning, and uh, the data center operators are all up in arms about it. Anyway, let me uh, stop this, and...